Hi, everyone. I'm Leah, and I'm a policy and research associate at Tree People, and I'll be presenting with Devin, who is interning with us at Tree People. So today we'll be going over best management practices for urban soils. And so as part of our phase two of healthy soils for healthy communities, we intend to provide best management practices for urban soils to the general public through demonstration projects and community engagement, such as today's symposium. So in addition to that, we are currently writing a summary report on urban soils, best management practices, and we hope to have a digital manual that would be specific to either LA or have a broader um, application across cities. So we conducted uh, research on a wide range of existing literature reviews. We looked at uh, 50 articles and case studies, including successful projects and policies. Um, and as you can see, we also conducted 13 interviews um, with folks from a variety of different fields, such as soil scientists, nonprofit leaders, and a public uh, worker. We'll be providing a brief overview of Urban Soil's Best Management Practices, or BMPs for short. So BMPs, um, as Rich defined earlier, is a practice or combination of practices that is determined to be effective and of practical, practical means of promoting soil health. Since Urban Soil's is a very broad topic, uh, we created categories here including uh, stormwater management, tree canopy, all of which fall under the umbrella of urban soils. Um, so we'll be discussing, discussing BMPs uh, for each of these categories in the urban context. So I'll be handing it over to Devin to um, discuss the first BMP. Hello. So uh, the first thing we want to talk about when it comes to best management practices comes with uh, the tree canopy. So as we know, trees are really crucial to when it comes to urban soil, as they reduce like a lot of things like urban heat island effect, they reduce runoff and infiltration of water, as well as intercept some rainfall. Um, one area that's excelling in the development of tree canopy is Seattle. Now their street edge alternatives project uh, has looked at the perfect composition when it comes to look for soil for trees and urban architecture. Their goal was to increase the natural drainage while also protecting the native topsoil and um, just soil health in general. Uh, they're, they're also like trying to see that the soil would remain healthy and create a great micro ecosystem between the microbes, the roots of the plants, as well as the soil itself. Now with soil health and pervious surfaces increasing within Seattle and many other cities, tree growth is supported and is really able to flourish in these urban areas. Um, the next sort of BMP has to do with urban agriculture. Soil plays an important role within urban agriculture, such as uh, community gardens. This image shows the waste reduction uh, through different composition programs, uh, composting programs, excuse me. Ultimately, these different programs can support a lot of things like waste reduction and promote the distribution of, composition, of compost to many different areas uh, within cities. One example of this is the California statewide policy that's been generated by Cal Recycle called SB 1383. This bill diverts like a lot of organic waste into compost and is distributed among community, community gardens to ultimately reduce the waste and reduce the greenhouse gas emissions, such as methane and CO2 that's really found in landfills when uh, the compost and other organic waste is not diverted from it. Here we see that the compost provides a lot of benefits to healthy soils, which promotes community gardens that really sets the stage for food sovereignty with an increase in healthy produce available, community engagement, as well as environmental education for many different schools and children. Finally, we look at the best management practices when it comes to stormwater management. Many people disregard the fact that there's brown infrastructure in stormwater management and many like factors include, or many things encompass brown infrastructure, but what we found most important was soil rebuilding. As seen here in this video, we really wanna improve the profile of soil so that they're able to absorb more water 
and they can decrease the strain put on our public water systems. One example of implementing the best management practices of urban soils through soil profile rebuilding is in the County of Arlington with their new land distributing activity stormwater permit. The permit is intended to reduce the pollution from sediment runoff as well as manage the stormwater runoff for new developments in areas. In this video, you could see them digging up the soil and trying to do their best to mix in the compost within the soil so it's able to flourish and provide like a good ecosystem and help with drainage problems. Um, the next area of stormwater management includes great infrastructure. Measure W is a new policy within Los Angeles that uses the property tax on imper impermeable surface to capture billions of gallons of water uh, that go through our drains, which can help prevent droughts within California. This is a necessity due to the fact that over 50% of the city of Los Angeles is covered with impervious surfaces. Now the average homeowner will pay about $83 a year, and this is essential because stormwater is overflowing and increasing the disintegration of public infrastructure, as well as runoff and the removal of topsoil. This policy would help fund gray infrastructure projects such as these concrete stormwater storage caverns, which would limit the negative impact that it has on urban ecosystems. Okay, thank you. Next, we have uh, carbon sequestration. So uh, as you know, urban soils store and sequester a significant amount of carbon and are known to be a carbon pool. So the question is, how do we prevent soil disturbance and ensure that carbon stays in the soil? Uh, one example is the Los Angeles Sanitation Department's guidelines for applying organic soil amendments. Uh, these guidelines provide instructions for where organic soil amendments can be applied and what their benefits are. So this image shows areas such as community gardens or residential areas that can benefit from organic soil amendments. And some of those benefits include improving soil cover to reduce erosion and soil temperature um, and also enhance soil carbon uh, sequestration. And um, as Eugene mentioned earlier, we are implementing the first urban uh, carbon farm in Griffith Park as part of phase two. Next, we have best management practices for soil contamination. Uh, soil contamination poses serious public health risks. Uh, we know urban development can lead to uh, lead exposure um, from toxic heavy metals such as um, cop copper, nickel, but the biggest concern is um, the consumption of lead that can lead to elevated lead levels in children's blood. Uh, one BMP for soil contamination is to test soils at brownfields and proposed urban agricultural sites uh, prior to development and follow the BMP protocol during cleanup. For example, uh, the UC Agriculture and Natural Resources provides resources for soil testing and so this image shows a community garden in Oakland, California. Um, and one challenge is evaluating whether municipalities should require soil testing. Um, and although it's very important to test soils prior to development, this can of course create uh, costly barriers for those planning to start a community garden. And lastly, we have uh, BMPs for biodiversity. Uh, so maintaining and supporting biodiversity in the urban context through trees and plantings um, is very crucial. Um, so disturbing soil can also disturb biodiversity. Um, however, applying the proper soil amendments can protect native uh, species, including native uh, microbiota. And very recently, uh, California became the first state to commit to a 30 by 30 goal, which is a pledge to conserve 30% of the state's land and water by 2030. And this map here shows the highest number of native species in dark yellow and uh, protected lands in dark blue. So it's important to acknowledge the role of urban areas and involve the soil community 
during this process to protect as much biodiversity as possible. Uh, urban soils uh, BMP should be incorporated comprehensively, taking into consideration all aspects of urban soils. And again, this was a very high level summary and we'll hear more uh, details from our upcoming speakers. Um, there are still knowledge gaps that need to be addressed and we are planning to produce a report as next steps to provide more details and examples of urban soils BMPs. Uh, in addition, we must conduct further research, implement more policies, engage the community and monitor existing BMPs. Uh, we'd like to thank Arla for funding this project. And we'd also like to thank those who participated in our interview process. Um, your examples are very helpful for us. And thank you everyone for your time.